Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. Today we are learning the chapter Control and Coordination. Let us discuss endocrine system of human beings. Endocrine system means the second means of control our body by means of hormones which are chemicals. So the glands which secrete hormones are called an endocrine glands. So we are learning a few endocrine glands in our body uh, starting from pituitary which is located just below the hypothalamus and pituitary is known as the master gland. Then comes thyroid which is present in the throat region. Then next is thymus which is present on top of our heart. On top of our kidneys we have a adrenal glands, a pair of adrenal glands are there. Pancreas is a gland which is actually a heterocrine gland because pancreas can secrete digestive enzymes so it is an exocrine gland whereas it can secrete hormones so it is also called the endocrine gland. Then uh, two hormones which are actually different up to this all are same in males as well as females but when it comes to the last pair of hormones sex hormones they are different. So I used only one diagram to represent both to save time. So uh, in females a pair of ovaries are also acting as the endocrine glands whereas in males uh, a pair of testes they act as endocrine gland. So, uh, now we will discuss one by one and their functions. So starting from, uh, I will go in the MCRT textbook order, it's starting with the adrenal glands. So uh, adrenal glands are present on top of the kidneys. Ad adrenal glands secrete a hormone called adrenaline. Adrenaline is a hormone which is otherwise called a flight or fight hormone because this hormone actually helps us in preparing uh, to deal with an emergency situation. So think of any emergency situation, we have two choices. Either we can fight back or we can face that situation or we can run away from the situation. So if you take the example of a squirrel, if it is coming across its predator, then two choices are there. It can run away, for that it needs a lot of energy in its uh, muscles or limbs. Uh, at the same time it can fight back for also, it needs a lot of uh, uh, energy in, or the power in the limbs. So whether it is facing or fighting or running back or flying, in both the situations the common preparations are made in the body because ultimately we need power in our skeletal muscles. So once adrenal uh, gland secretes adrenaline, this adrenaline will be targeting a few organs in our body. As I mentioned, uh, there is no uh, tube for bringing it to the target organ. It will be simply released out of the gland and it will diffuse through different cells which can detect them and pass it on to the uh, other cells until it reaches the target organ. So target organs have certain uh, molecules on their surface which can detect and get the information and act accordingly. So here, the, this is an important question, which are the target organs of adrenaline? So first is the heart. Because any situation we need to pump more blood in order to ensure the oxygen supply to the muscles to get more energy. So heartbeat increases or uh, whenever we are under a stressful situation, when we are nervous, butterflies in the stomach and heart rate increases, right? So that is the first target organ. Second, during this time, we will reduce the blood supply to digestive system and the skin and we will cause, uh, send more blood to the skeletal system. Because digestion uh, is not a priority at that time. We need more energy in our muscles. So by contracting the muscles around the digestive system, the arteries, minute arteries will uh, reduce the supply of blood there. At the same time, this blood can be diverted to our skeletal muscles where we need more energy. And naturally our respiration rate also increases because we have our ribs and a diaphragm contracting which will result in increased breathing rate. So all these changes together enable us to deal with the situation whether it is flight or a fight. So here the uh, gland is adrenal gland situated on top of the kidneys and the hormone is adrenaline and it is called a flight or fight hormone. Okay, so every hormone you can make a chart while studying the name of the gland, name of the hormone and its action. Then we talk about thyroid gland. Thyroid glands are located on both sides of our windpipe or trachea in the throat region. A pair of glands are there which actually secrete a hormone called a thyroxine. Thyroxine is helping in uh, metabolism of fat, carbohydrates and proteins which are the three major components of our diet. Means metabolism means what? Their digestion and then their utilization altogether. So, 
that is required for en uh, ensuring a proper growth of the organism or proper life processes to happen. If there is any uh, disturbance in the level of thyroxine, the metabolism will be in trouble and that can lead to certain consequences. Now for the proper functioning of this thyroid gland, one mineral is required that is iodine. So if iodine is not enough in the diet, it may lead to swelling of this gland in the neck region leading to a condition called a goiter. So the gland is thyroid, secretes the hormone thyroxine, function, metabolism of a carbohydrates, fats and proteins and for the proper functioning we need iodine. Next is pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is called a master gland. Actually these hormones control the rest of the uh, hormone, uh, glands also in the body or their hormone secretions. So pituitary gland mainly secretes a hormone called a growth hormone. So uh, one thing you have to understand here is we are not talking about all the hormones secreted by these glands. In class 10 level only one uh, from each gland is uh, mentioned in the textbook that doesn't mean that only one hormone is secreted. Okay, in higher class you will learn more about it. So pituitary gland secretes a hormone called a growth hormone which helps in the uh, proper growth of an organism. So during the growth stage it should be secreted in the normal amount. Otherwise, the people may suffer certain consequences. Like if the secretion is not enough, means under secretion, it can lead to a condition called a pituitary dwarfism. Means they will not grow high or they are very short people. The same way, if a secretion is more, that means over secretion, can lead to a condition called a gigantism. Means very tall people, extremely tall or abnormally tall people. So, under secretion leads to dwarfism and over secretion leads to gigantism. So, proper amount of growth hormone needs to be secreted. Next, we talk about sex hormones. In human beings, there are two different types of sex hormones in males and females. Both are secreted by the primary sex organs. In female, it is the ovary and male, it is the testis. A pair of ovaries are present. They secrete a hormone called a estrogen. The estrogen is helping in the sexual characters of females and also for the maturation of ovum. The same way in males, the testis secretes a hormone called a testosterone and it is helping in the proper functioning of the male reproductive system and the sexual characters of male and also helps in uh, formation of the sperms or the gametes. Now coming to the pancreatic hormone which is main hormone is insulin. Insulin is regulating the blood sugar level. So it's only regulating means it's actually bringing down the blood glucose level. For example, uh, if this is your hormone uh, sugar level, normal sugar level you imagine and you are eating a lot of chocolates, ice creams, pastries and all. So naturally our blood sugar level will go up because our glucose is increasing. So during that time pancreas will secrete a hormone called an insulin. So insulin will bring the sugar level back by converting glucose into glycogen and it becomes normal and if it continuously secretes what's the problem it will go down leading to less sugar in our body that's also not good so once it reaches the normal level then the secretion will stop now there are certain times when we are fasting or we are not eating enough food our blood sugar level goes down then there is another hormone called a glucagon which will bring it down so glucagon you don't have to study but remember insulin is bringing down the uh, sugar level or controlling the sugar level of our body. So here comes the importance of the proper dose and the timing of secretion of these hormones. If they are excess it can cause many problems and also correct precise amount should be secreted. In this case we saw if insulin keeps on secreting even after coming to the normal level then it is going to decrease the sugar level. So there should be a mechanism called a feedback mechanism which will help the body to detect the uh, amount of uh, sugar. Means if the sugar is going down, it knows oh, it's normal now, I have to stop secretion. The same way if it is going down, it has to secrete glucagon. So feedback is always uh, there for uh, hormone secretion. Hope you understood the human uh, endocrine system also well. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel, Biology My Passion.